mission, ground crew attention. Flight C, returning from bombing mission, ground crew attention. We got through all right, sir. Smashed the tankers and the hangar. Good. What happened to Lieutenant Davis's ship? I don't know for sure, sir. We were up ahead tearing for home, and Davis cut in on the radio and reported zeros on his tail. Right after that, his radio went out. Well, get yourself some food and then turn in your reports. I'm afraid they're lost, sir. As long as there's gas in the tank, there's still a chance. Yes, sir. Well, the boys certainly did a job. Take a look at those pictures. Nice work. No use holding up the intelligence report any longer, is there? I suppose not. G2? Major Stanlaw. Report on Operation 6W. Mission successful. Two bombers returned. One missing. Yes. Lieutenant Jonathan Davis and crew composed of the following. Co-pilot Lieutenant Jack Sarno. Bombardier Sergeant Harold Trask. Radio Sergeant. Ground crew attention. Bomber coming in. Ground crew attention. Hold that Bomber coming in. Ground Hold it. I'll call you later. Sergeant Trask? Killed in action. Sergeant Blaswell? Sergeant Pettis? Missing. Missing? I'd have never been able to bring the bomber back if it hadn't been for Pettis. If you want to give us the details now, we're, we're holding up the report. It's kind of hard to explain in an ordinary report, sir. What happened out there is all mixed up with what happened years ago. You see, Pattis and I went to school together. He was a typical slum kid, kicked around from the start. Had a chip on his shoulder against the whole world, and me in particular. It wasn't his fault. His father was in the pen most of the time, and my father was a school principal. Lost track of him after we grew up. I went in the district attorney's office. Had a few run-ins with him. In my line of work. I could never hang anything on him. One day last year, I went down to Coney Island, where he was running a shooting gallery. Hello. <laughs> oh. 
proxy. Hit the road. But Foxy... Shove off. Well, of all the sluggy guys. What do you want, copper? Sorry about your father, Foxy. What are you trying to do, salve your conscience? What happened wasn't my fault. I just took him in for a routine checkup. Oh, sure. Every time the old man would get a job, you'd show up and they'd bounce him. You never let him forget for a minute that he was an ex-con. That isn't true. You hounded him to death. I have a good mind. Go ahead. You're a brave muzzler, aren't you? The gun holds only seven shots. You knocked down seven ducks, so... Very sharp. But you always were. About your father, Foxy. I had to do a job. I came here to tell you I'm sorry. And I'm telling you I won't forget. Someday I'm gonna get you just the way you got my old man. The Japs might beat you to it. I enlisted yesterday. So long. So long, sucker. Nice chat. That was Foxy. To him, any guy who'd enlist would be a sucker. They assigned me to Kelly Field. I came out as a flying sergeant. I wanted all the fundamentals, so I volunteered for gunnery school. They sent me to Hags. That's Harlingen Army Gunnery School, the tip of Texas near the Gulf. and I'm not going to pull any punches. Your navigator may map your course. Your pilot may take you there. Your bombardier will destroy the objective. But it's up to you, the gunner, to smash the attacking enemy so that your bomber will come home safely. We can't take any chances on you. If you don't make good, you'll be washed out. You're either a good gunner or you're a dead gunner. And the operation on which your ship is sent will die with you. The safety of your ship, your safety, the safety of the entire crew depends on what you learn here. Remember that, and I'm sure that you'll come through as the best gunners in any man's army. Second squadron, stand jump. Legs on left shoulder, wait. One step forward. Arch. At ease.
Each flight will have an instructor who will stay with you throughout the entire course. Instructor for flight A, Sergeant Pattis. Sergeant Jones. Glad to know you, Jones. You can put the bag down. What's your name? Private Laswell. You sleepy? Kind of. I got caught up since my last job. Yeah, what was that? Night clerk in an auto court. <laughs> Relax. Gadget plane. Private plane, sir. Radio operator. Glad to know you, Gadget. Button up. Private lunch, sir. Sure glad to be in your class. Where are you from, son? Well, my home's not far from here. I sure hope I get to be a gunner, sir. Yeah. Well, keep your nose clean and your eyes peeled and you'll make it. Hello, Foxy. Well, fancy meeting you here. Small war, isn't it? Yeah. And not very exclusive. All right, men, you're on your own. Until 5.30 in the morning. It's the middle of the night. Hey, Foxy. Listen, I can't help you being in my flight, copper. But outside of class, give me room. Oh, forget the grudge, Foxy. We're both in the Army for the same reason. Yeah. I'm in it because I was drafted. You're in it because you're a chump. You're just blowing off steam. Okay, you be the hero. I got me a soft touch where I can order stoops like you around for the duration. Say, I bet it'd break your heart to get washed out, wouldn't it? Wouldn't make me happy. Well, that's splendid, Sergeant. <laughs> I'll see you in class. No weapon is any safer than the man behind it. Even though the gun is a gunner's best friend. And now, it's a knife and a fork. Blaine. Yes, sir. Uh, what is that thing? Oh, it's just a gadget I invented. <laughs> America's secret weapon? Oh, no, sir. It's a, a tool of a hundred uses. You see? First, ice pick. Mm -hmm. Knife and a fork. And like that, a coat hanger. <laughs> And a bottle opener. Corkscrew. Well, isn't that wonderful? Yes, sir. Folks back in Mahoney's garage in Peoria said I was a mechanical wizard. You don't say. Yes, sir. Anybody got any, uh, tobacco? Tobacco? Yes, sir. Oh, I, I forgot to tell you. It's a pipe, too. Now, sit down and pay attention. Yes, sir. Sergeant Davis, what is meant by a vertical lead? A vertical angle by which a gun must be moved, above or below a straight line from the muzzle to the target, so the projectile will pass through the target. <laughs> You're pretty smart, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Very smart. <laughs> Laswell. Laswell, what is meant by a vertical lead? The vertical angle at which the gun must be moved above or below a straight line in the muzzle to the target so the projectile will pass through the target. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Sandy, you handle it this way. I'll never get through this course. Being a gunner means a lot to you, doesn't it? I've got to make it if I don't... Davis, what do you think we're running here, a day nursery? You expect to carry your own personal mechanic in combat? A little help doesn't do any harm, does it? Well, you stick to your own chopper. Don't let him get your goat, kid. He's riding you because he can't get a rise out of me. Well, that's a fine-looking junk pile. You're supposed to line up everything orderly. How are you gonna put that garbage together in two minutes blindfolded? Easy. Try me. <laughs> Gather around, gents. The great mechanical wizard is about to perform the blindfold test. <laughs> Two minutes, huh? This I gotta see. All right, now go.
There you are, completely assembled. <laughs> That's wonderful, Gadget. Simply wonderful. Yes, sir. All assembled? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Now, what do we do with this piece? <laughs> <laughs> There's a malfunction in every one of these guns. Pick one and fire it until it jams, then find out what's wrong with it. All right, let it go. your gun. That's how you stop it. The star pupil always gets the runaway gun. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Out of 25. That's enough to pass, isn't it? Yeah, by a hair. You're up next. I did all right, huh? You bet you did. Go ahead. Ball. Miss. Ball. Miss. First time I thought it was a mistake. I don't know what you're talking about. You're purposely trying to miscore me. Don't be a dope. You missed. If you're going to wash me out, that's about as nasty a way as any. Are you calling me a liar? Yes, I am. And if you want in uniform, I... Don't let that stop you. Hey, the scrap. They'll be tossed out. Stop it. Cut it out. Which of you started this fight? I'm afraid I lost my temper, sir. You have an excellent training record at Kelly, Davis. Won't happen again, sir. Another such incident won't be overlooked. You understand, Sergeant? Yes, sir. You may go. If you think I'm going to thank you for that, you're nuts. I don't expect anything from you. All right, then go back to your rover boys and tell them about your good deed. Why, you... Go ahead, why don't you hit me? Well, sucker, that time it almost worked. <laughs> What happened? Oh, they threw me in the bullpen for a few hours. Then the old man decided to give me a second chance. Oh, that's a good deal. Next time, I think I'll finish the job. Why don't you two guys get together? Foxy's not such a Look, bad Sammy, guy. I don't want to discuss it. Well, you're lucky, John. They just busted a buddy of mine for breathing at a general. What do you mean, breathing? Just breathing. Of course, one of his front teeth was missing. He made a funny noise. <laughs> John. Mm -hmm. John. Hmm? We get 24 hours leave Saturday. Did you wake me up just to tell me that? No, but would you like to spend the weekend down at our ranch? Son, you got yourself a guest. Good. Good night, Sam. Good night. Gals go around. Same situation all through Texas. <laughs> okay.
Seen Private Lunt around? Not that I know of, Sergeant. He's supposed to meet me here. Okay. Thanks. Soldier, you pass. Oh, there you are, Foxy. Sorry to be late. All set, Sandy? Yep, let's go. Say, what is this? You don't think I'm gonna spend the weekend with him, do you? Well, gee, fellas, you can't walk out on me now. After I had my sister drive all the way up to get us. What's the matter, Sandy? We're gonna have to rope your guests? Sister, your sister? Well, that's different. Come on. <laughs> well, <laughs> we were only kidding. Sure, Sandy's a sucker for a rib. Uh, my oh. sister Peggy, Sergeant Patterson, and Sergeant Sandy. David. How do you do? Hello. Sandy's written to me about both of you. Well, I hope he kept it decent. <laughs> Been keeping you a secret. Well, I'll drive. <laughs> yeah. Fine, I'm doing fine. <laughs> you know, one more piece of that southern fried chicken and I'll be talking with a Dixie accent. <laughs> oh, it's wonderful. Yeah. It's a lot better than the barracks. I'll say it is. Sandy, why don't you show Sergeant Davis some of your work? Oh, he wouldn't want to be bothered, Mother. What is that, Mrs. Lund? Well, he paints, and he's very good, too. Go on, Sandy. Come on, let's have a look. All right, if you want to be bored. <laughs> Excuse me. Surely. Save the next one for me, will you? That's a problem. Now, you children have fun. I'm right in the midst of a great mystery. There are more murders. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to let us know who done it. I won't. You're quite close to Matamoras across the border here, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Just about 15 miles. There's a new band of Pablos out of this world. Yes. So I heard that's at new spot, isn't it? That's all right. How about taking a run over? Oh, that's just a grand idea. I'll tell you what. You gather up Sandy and John, and I'll go get the car up. Gather up Sandy? Oh, sure, sure. I'll gather them up. Well, meet me out front. Good. stay home and study. I thought they came down here to relax. Yeah, I thought it was kind of funny myself, but you know, after all, people are... Uh... Anybody who can paint like that ought to be in the camouflage division. Not me. I'm gonna be a gunner. See, you're a ferocious guy. Excuse me, Sandy. I got this dance with your sister. This one's mine, pet. You know, if this class comes through okay, I may get a commission. Tell me more about yourself. Oh, you wouldn't be interested. Well, of course I would. I like to know about people. Really? All right. My mother was a Hindu princess and my father was a pirate. It was a case of love at first sight, so he kidnapped her and I was born on the South Sea Island. I've never <laughs> known anyone quite like you. Well, that goes double. You know, I've never known anybody quite like you. Let's see what the Army's done for you. Yeah. Yeah, it's all right. Funny, I, I was sure this was a shortcut. <laughs> Very nicely done. What? <laughs> I've used this gag lots of times. It's perfect. Moonlight, orange blossoms, beautiful. Now, wait a minute. All I said was I thought this was a shortcut. Well, that's what I mean. Why go the long way around?
Can I say any more? Why, of course not. From your viewpoint, it was just a natural mistake. Welcome home. Hello. So you ran out on us, huh? You know, Emily Post says that isn't very nice. But I thought you wanted to study. Foxy. Is that what he told you? Well, it's been a lovely evening. Good night, kiddies. Good night. What a guy. What a guy. I'm quite a guy myself. You'll only give me a chance to prove it. Really? You know, you promised me a dance. The Yankees are very, very stubborn. So Foxy outsmarted you in the first round. <laughs> I admit I felt like a wounded pigeon. But he had one advantage. He could leave the post every night, and I could. firing 30 caliber machine guns at stationary targets. Sandy was doing better now, and I, maybe because I had Peggy on my mind, was getting worse. Foxy did everything he could to wash me out. Came the big day when we advanced to firing 50 calibers at moving targets. There was to be a post dance that night. Foxy had invited Peggy and gotten her a pass to watch the firing trial. Roger. Ready for firing. Roger. Better watch your eardrums. Short bursts! And watch your traces for lead correction. Bug, the army can wait. Don't forget. You look mighty good up there, Sandy. Well, I'm glad you were here to give me moral support. <laughs> Load your guns while I pick up the target. I suppose these target trials are very important. This and the last step. Firing from one plane are targets told by another. If they pass these last two phases, they're in. And if they don't? We trade them to the Brooklyn Dodgers. <laughs> That one's ready. Here's your dirty laundry. On the next batch, give me some real speed. I've been running the car at 35. I'll run at full speed this time. 
what my instructions say. Say, listen, there's a guy out there. I want to slap his ears down. With the cart liable to jump the track. What's the matter, you chicken? I tell you, it's not geared to hold the track at full speed. Anyhow, I'm not supposed to. OK, I'll do it myself. How you going to get off if it gets going too fast? Jump! That's all the commotion. <laughs> Sleeper, come here. <laughs> Miss Jones, Private Lasso. How do you do? Miss Cassidy, Mr. Blaine. Uh, how's the weather up there? Miss O'Donnell. Hi. Gadget, Sleeper. Buddy. Machine, sir? I put a nickel in it, nothing happened. Well, you just let me at it. I don't know whether I told you or not, honey, but I'm a mechanical wizard. So that's what you are. I was wondering. You better let them fix it, girls, or it'll pout all evening. Here, hold my hat. I got work to do. This is interesting. I told you not to start with anything. It reminds me of something I once took apart in Peoria. Get that fixed, or I'll take you apart. Give them a chance, boys. You were in there so long. The doctor says he can leave by morning. Oh, that's fine. I know you you came down as his day, but how about going to dance with me? Well, it's, it's been sort of a strenuous day, John, and I think maybe I'd better go on home. I understand. Ship shape. Never even muss my hair. My hat, please. Who's got a nickel? There you are. What I tell you? She's working. It's all yours, Lieutenant. <laughs> Peggy, I'll only be here another week. I know this sounds kind of sudden, but you see the war's changed I'm a lot of I'm sorry, John. What were you saying? Gosh, do I have to start all over again? John. Foxy just asked me to marry him. You marry Foxy? Mm -hmm. You surprised? Yeah, sort of. Well, to tell you the truth, I am too, a little bit. 
You know Foxy. Yeah. I know Foxy. Well, I'll see you at graduation. Bye. Bye. The trouble with you, Davis, is you played the game too straight. Sprague, you're a confounded cynic. She had a right to make up her own mind. We had a lot of work to do. I tried to forget. We'd learned the preliminaries. Now came the real test, firing from a plane in simulated combat at a towed target. Two such flights might mean the difference between getting our gunner's wings or being grounded for the duration. We were plenty nervous that day in the flight room, waiting for our turn to go up. You need those fingers, Sandy. This is worse than waiting to have a tooth pulled. Flight D coming in from air to air trial. Flight A up next. On the line in five minutes. All right, boys, that's us. Check your equipment. Hey, button up your May West. You never can tell where you'll end up in the Gulf. My glad that's it. How'd you do, Chubby? How should I know? I had my eyes closed most of the time. Don't worry about our flight. We'll lick the pants off of you guys. Yes. Wake me when the score comes in. Uh oh, here comes the bad news. Well, I'm mighty proud of you fellas. Average above passing with only one exception. Exception? Hope it ain't me. Three? There must be some mistake. I'm sorry, Johnson. That was your second try. You'll be okay with the ground crew. Yeah, but I want to be a gunner. That, that's what I joined up for. I'm sorry, Johnson. Never mind, kid. You tried. Flight A to the flying line. Flight A to the flying line. So you think you did pretty good up there today, huh, Benson? Well, the even money your flight doesn't score as well. I'll take some of that. Wait a minute, wait a minute. This is strictly between Benson and me. A month's salary, we beat you. How about it, sucker? You got a bet, soldier. Better draw that money in advance. I'm gonna need it for a wedding ring. Okay. <laughs> Come, hey, where's Gadget? Come on, Gadget, we're up. Hey, what the devil are you so interested in? Come on, Lug, will you?
you're a gunner or you're a false alarm. You better make it good. I have three bursts each in rotation. Private plane, plane 23. Go ahead. Didn't you fire? I'm sorry, Foxy. I, I tried, but I, I couldn't. You tried. I could excuse you if you tried and missed. I tried to fire, I tell you, but something happened. I can't explain it. I got sick. You didn't get sick. You're just scared, spitless. I ought to smack you so hard, you. Slow down, kid. That happens to lots of guys. Let me alone, will you? Just let me alone. I hated to see that happen in my flight. What about Sandy? What happens now? He'll go up tomorrow and score. Or else. We'll break the kid's heart finishing up like this. Funny he'd volunteer. You'd think a guy would know inside whether he could take it or not. That lad's not scared. Not the way Foxy thinks. What do you mean? We've all got reasons for being here. Maybe we're convinced we've got to wipe out the Nazis and Japs to keep them from taking us over. Maybe we're fighting for an ideal. Maybe we just want to get out there and cover ourselves with glory. But not Sandy. He has some personal reason. He keeps driving. He keeps him tied up in knots. That's what happened today. He got tied in knots. Talk like you know, Jonesy. I've seen fellows like him. Quiet, gentle kids. They worry themselves sick. But once they get into combat with dive bombers screaming overhead and lead whistling around their ears, 
They're out in front showing the tough guys what a real soldier is like. Wait a minute. You mean you've seen action? I was with the British at Dunkirk. I've got to get some steak. How do you like that, Jonesy? With the British at Dunkirk? Huh. And I thought that guy was a powder puff. I hope he's right about Sandy. The way Foxy wrote him, I don't think he'll be any better tomorrow than he was today. Where's Lunt? I saw him a while ago, heading toward the chapel. Button up. Foxy? Yeah? Look, Sandy will want his second chance. Do you think he ought to go up tomorrow? Let him get his nerve up. If I'm in charge of this flight, Davis. When I want any advice, I'll ask for it. like that. Why can't I have just a, a little of the courage my father had? He, he gave his life for his country. And I know he was never afraid. Let me carry on for him. I promised I would. Please, I've tried so hard. Can't, can't you give me some help? Dear Lord, help me to find this train. Be with me tomorrow when, when I'm up there again. I've got to make good. I, I've just got to. I'm sorry about what happened this afternoon. I, uh, I just hated to see you mess up your firing test. I can't blame you. Now, look, kid, there are loads of jobs in the Army. Suppose you got into administration. You'd be near home. I'm entitled to another trial tomorrow. Well, sure you are. But I just hate to see you go up, that's all. Thanks for trying, Foxy. I'll be all right tomorrow. Sure got a hand in.
Savage speaking. Go ahead. Shoot the plane cracked up. Three miles beyond lifeguard station. Fire trapped in plane. Hurry! Come on, boys, let's go. you go up. My own fault. Run away, gun. What did you say? I had sent that gun myself. Never was any good at those things. How'd the boys make out? Oh, fine. They all passed. Sleeper and Gadget are outside. They'll be getting their wings Saturday. Yeah. So will you in a month or so. No use kidding, Foxy. I'm washed out for good. I tell you, it's Foxy's fault. If he hadn't called him a coward in front of the company and forced him to go up again. Good evening, Miss Lunt. We were waiting around to hear about Sandy. You know, there's something you really ought to invent. Yeah. What? A zipper for your lip. I better let you get some rest, kid. <clears throat> Wait. Tokyo together. You gonna ask for combat? Sure. We're both getting the same outfit. Take it. Well, now look, Sandy. Car carry it for me, Foxy. You're a good fighter. Like my father. I never. Doctor. Nothing I could do. Don't touch me.
few weeks, you will be fighting for your country in Alaska, the South Seas, Britain, Africa, on all the battlefronts of this globe-circling war. That you are ready is evidenced by the fact that you stand before me to receive your gunner's wings. Wear them proudly, for they are your mark of achievement. Sergeant Michael O'Banion. Jackson Laswell, Sergeant Lancelot Blaine, Sergeant Lancelot Blaine. We pause to honor a member of your class who is no longer with us. He did not find the going here easy, but above all else, he wanted to be a gunner. He knew his handicaps, yet despite a first failure, he came back to try again. His was the kind of courage which inspires the rest of us to keep fighting no matter what the odds, no matter what the personal cost. On behalf of the Army Air Corps and this class, we award posthumously to Sergeant Sanford Lunt the wings of an aerial gunner. Mrs. Lunt, you may be sure of our deep sympathy and friendship. My boy would have been very proud, Colonel. Very proud. For the first time since he was a kid kicking around the gutters of New York, spitting in the face of fate, Foxy seemed late. I suppose the girl was through with him. It was a tough break for him. But then I was in love with her, too. She let me kiss her goodbye, no promise, of course. But I left with the feeling that when I came back, I had a chance. A few days later, I got my commission. I was assigned here. You mean you left without kissing Foxy goodbye? He wouldn't even see me. I guess he hated me more than ever. After I was here a few weeks, you sent for me. Remember? You sent for me, sir? Yes, the uh, San Francisco plane brought something for you. A new tail gunner. Sergeant! I understand you two know each other. Yes, sir, we do. Take charge from Lieutenant. I'm due on the line. Yes, sir. I thought you didn't want any action. A guy can change his mind, sir. Never mind the formality. Yes, sir. Coincidence in sending you down here. Coincidence my foot, sir. I asked to be sent. Look, Foxy, if you're going to let that grudge carry you 5,000 miles... Oh, no, it wasn't that, sir. No, indeed. It was a picture of a South Sea babe that I saw in a magazine. Oh, she was gorgeous. And you know how Come I on. am about that. Come on. Things. Meet the rest of the crew. Yes, sir. Gadget. Hello, sleeper. Getting caught up on your napping? Hi. Hello. Sergeant Trask, our bombardier. Foxy Pattis, our tail gunner. Glad to know you. Same here. Pack it right here. I'm upstairs. Oh, swell. Say, uh, uh, wasn't Jonesy with you fellas? That was his bunk. They're shipping him back on the same plane that brought you in. Jonesy? Yeah. One unlucky slug from a zero. Oh, that's tough. He was a good guy, Jonesy. Down right, he was a good guy. And so was Sandy. Gadget. What's the matter? Cut it out. See you guys later. Here, let me help you. Let's get on over to PX before it closes. Closes? Why, they don't close. They know that. Let them alone, Trask. I thought it was going to be hot in the South Seas. Sleeper and Gadget resented Foxy's presence from the beginning. They still blamed Foxy for what had happened to Sandy. They didn't want him around. Living in 
in such close quarters, sooner or later there was bound to be a blow-off. <laughs> you forgot to jump, sucker. I'm not very good at this. Sandy taught him how to play. He wasn't very good either. Now listen, I've taken all the writing I'm gonna take, see? Yes. If either one of you mentions Sandy's name again, yes, I'll... Up. What's the matter with you guys? Nothing, sir. He was just... Now listen to me, both of you. We've got to work together. Otherwise, we're no good as a bombing crew. If you don't want a team with Foxy, then you can ask for a transfer. And by George, I'll recommend it, too. We don't want that, sir. Well, then stop acting like a couple of schoolgirls. Yes, sir. Get out on the line and make the ship ready for a bombing mission. You mean we're going up? I don't know. We've got orders. Go out and check the ship. I hope this isn't just another fire drill. Foxy, go on out there and check your guns. Yes, sir. And, uh, thanks. What? Thanks. They were getting me down. I thought I heard wrong. You're welcome, Foxy. Wait a minute. Got something for you. Now, when you reach this point, you each head for your own target. Lieutenant Brandt, you'll concentrate on the hangars. Yes, sir. If you get any ships in the open, get them too. Right, sir. Lieutenant Davis, your objective is the barracks. You saw the pictures. Yes, sir. Ferguson gets the tanker, is that clear? Yes, sir. Now, if you meet any fighters, don't stop to spar. Your job is to unload your bombs and get your ships home safely. We can't afford to lose any of them. We understand, sir. That's all. Set your watches. Takeoff is set for 1330 hours. Good luck and give them the works. Yes, sir. Well, here we go, boy. Awake, sir. No signs of any light yet. Sergeant Blaine, Lieutenant Davis. We're getting close, Gadget. Going up, sir. Take over, Sarnoff. Oh. There. Hey, Foxy. How's everything back there in the caboose? Ready to launch them. I'll speak to the Colonel. Maybe the next time he'll send a hostess along. Order one for me too, Lieutenant. There it is, men, right straight ahead. Lieutenant Brand, Ferguson, Lieutenant Davis. This is where we part company. Pick your spots. Roger. Good point. 
like Trask. He won't be sleeping there tonight. Bombs away, sir. We're starting the act act. Oh, give me a chance, Adam. I want to break in this chopper. Not this trip, Foxy. We've done our good deed for today. Let's see if the others are ready to go home. Lieutenant Sarnoff to Lieutenants Brant and Ferguson. How's tricks? They got the hangers and the tankers. They're up ahead of us going home. Good. Funny we haven't seen any Jap planes. No, we may have caught them all in the hangers. I hope so. That's a beautiful fire you left back there.
desk, siren off, and sleep. Yeah. You'll get plenty of sleep now. Foxy, we may none of us come out of this alive. I'd feel a lot better if you and I could make it up. I never learned how to talk, John. But maybe this will help. Dear Foxy, John wrote that you were down there with him. I know now I did you a terrible injustice, and I'm writing to ask you to forgive me. You were all just doing your job. Sandy would have gone up again, no matter what happened. He had to do his job, too. About you and me, it's better that it ended as it did. You must realize that now. I'd never known anyone quite like you, and you felt the same way about me. With John, it's different. I haven't told him yet, but when he comes back, I'll be waiting. Please don't feel too bitter toward me, Foxy. Someday, when all this is over, I'd like to see you again. Sincerely, Peggy. Well, we can't all win. She's a great girl. Mm -hmm. You can say that again. Lieutenant! Suppose I told you I could get the motor for you. Can you? You're asking me, the mechanical wizard? It's just the ignition wiring. Give me about five minutes. But are you sure you can lift her out of here? You fix it and we'll see. I'll fix it. Hey, we got company. Yeah, sniper. Hurry up, get that wiring. Well, how about that? Shut up! Get to work, John. You get at the controls ready to take off. There must be more than one of them. Gadget, how long will it take you to get that wiring? Oh, about five minutes anyway. Well, I'll hold them off as long as I can. And Gadget, don't start taking things apart. Put them together.
Sandy. He gave his life so we could fly our bomber home and use it again. We will, Foxy, for you and Sandy and Sandy's father and all the others who died to keep the stars and stripes flying over free America. We'll keep smashing at them again and again until we finish them for good. That, Foxy, I promise you.